Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Anna. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thanks for returning. Sorry about if you hear my voice. It's going to sound a little different in this video because I'm getting over a cold. So please don't mind that. In this video, I'm going to be talking about hospital essentials for what I would do differently or um, plan to do when I do have a surgery or a procedure done. Because there is one particular surgery that you get twice in your lifetime and I I will be getting that in the near future. Okay, I don't know why it took me so long to do this video. Don't ask me why. But it did. And now we're right here. So, let's start off by saying none of these have to be done. I would just do this and this is what I would do if I were going back in time to tell myself because or if I had to go back do the surgeries again um this is what I would me slash my mom to do keep in mind this is just my opinion you might have different opinions or what works for you just make the hospital stay as comfortable and as homey as you can because I'm sure what your recovery is already hard enough and you just want to make yourself as comfortable as possible. With that being said, let's roll right into the video. Things to bring to the hospital if you were in the if you were staying overnight and my first suggestion um, is bring like a computer or like a tablet to watch TV or something to entertain you with because you're going to be sitting in your bed and parents all the time and also know that you are going to be interrupted, people are going to be in and out all all the time. So think about something that you can um, be interrupted with. Okay, my second thing is a blanket because we all know that hostels are just cold. That's what they are. Um, so just prepare yourself for it and bring a blanket or when you're not moving with a PT or when you're not busy. Oh, and uh, also keep you warm. Now, I would just do a regular blanket because you don't know if you have um, a cord by you and you don't know how long you're being in the hospital for. So my next major thing I would do differently if I were to go back in time is bring slipper socks or slippers for the matter. If you have to walk, um, they do give you socks, but they're not as comfortable as um, your own slippers. That's what I would do differently. The next thing I would do differently is bring your own personal cup. One is very important that um, you stay hydrated. You know, um, not dehydrated, especially during recovery, because you have lots of food. Plus, um, I know you have your IV, but it's also good to keep drinking your cup. And I would bring your personal one because one, you know where that's been, and that way you don't have to um, worry about paper, plastic cups. And also, it just makes you happy because you can do like um, your favorite color. Like, uh, like I would definitely do that because it just brings 
a little piece of um, home to you. And that way, in the uh, situation where you have to share your room with another person, that way you know this is your cup and you don't have to, you won't, you won't get confused with other patients. So that's all I gotta say about that one. Now, what I will say about recovering in the hospital, it is never fun, but sometimes that is the place you need to be, and um, it would not be my preferred place to be, but you know, it is what it is. So, this is a good, um, this is a good tip um, for general recovery because it is just a vitamin E, which is a vitamin, but don't do what my mother did. Get the liquid vitamin E in my mother, and she knows I'm talking about this story, so you guys can laugh about it, and she knows. Um, in 2004, before there was a, the growth of Amazon, and all these things, and so, my mother, being, my mom is very much a huge advocate for vitamins. So, I just had, I just had the selective dose um, and I was getting, I just got home after a week, a week of staying in the hospital. It was one in the morning, and... <laughs> As anybody knows, the my stitches were super itchy because it was here. Like so, my mother took her her Shackley vitamin E because we had no idea there was liquid, and they are the capsule kind. Now she had to cut them open with just basic scissors and. Um, split them on and put them on the on my skirt. And anybody that knows the SDR knows that that is a huge scar to cover. At this point, they would slip out of her hands because her hands got so slippery. When in hindsight. We could have gotten a whole bottle of the liquid vitamins or the liquid vitamin E, but at the time we did not know that. Do yourself a favor and get yourself vitamin E. Um, also, I still use it to this day. It is just a good thing to have in general because it helps your skin heal. So, that was my story time for this section of the video. You guys can go watch my other um my other video I talk about all the things that my mom and I did over the years in traditional um, medicine and non traditional medicine non traditional medicine. My next thing I wanna say is I had a hip surgery because my muscle was basically pulling my hip out of its socket because it was too tight. So, we ended up having to have, I ended up having to have hip surgery because of that. And, typically, they have you be put in a body cast during this recovery. So I've been on, um, being ser serial casted for a couple years now. No, one of my um, times of being serial cancer, I actually had spasms, which um, that is a very typical thing of um, my diagnosis. Hence the spastic quadriplegia. Basically, what happened was while well, I was being serial cancer, one of the times. God, I had spasms for the first time, and 
it ended up bleeding, bunch of bruising. The reason I'm telling you this is when I went to the hospital, when I went for my hip surgery, they originally were going to do a body cast. And um, my mom told the doctor that I had it. I have a history of spasms, so um, that is not good because in a body cast, my whole body would be covered, hence the name body cast. Um, so, so my mom told me about my history of the spasms, and so they are, they were so, um, so understanding and they were very clever and came up with um doing a brace instead of a body cast yeah it just it was really cool because it was just like on my the brace would hook to my stomach or be strapped on my stomach and they used um it was in collaboration with the orthopedic surgeon and the Orthotic and prosthetic person lunch. Also, back to the story time. Kind of. <laughs> but, um, my mom was literally standing there as I was about to go into surgery. <laughs> and they were about ready to reel me into the, into the operating room. Um, so they were discussing that in the and the orthopedic surgeon uh, called in the, the the brace guy and was uh, explained the whole situation. In the matter of my surgery ended up being, it was supposed to be, I think four hours, but it ended up being eight hours because I had complications and I lost. Anyway, so. In the matter of eight hours, they drew it up, and in the matter of those hours, he made it, he got it done, and they, after my surgery, they put it on me, and I had it on. Um, when I woke up, and um, my plan saying this whole tangent of uh, this whole story time is don't be afraid to tell the doctor what your concerns are and also they may have a creative solution like they did with mine. So with that being said, this one thing I'm going to bring up, you can use it all the time. I use it. I love it so much. It is my ultimate sack. You can also use a BMAC. I wish I had it during um, the percutaneous because you are casted in that after the surgery for a little bit. Um, I absolutely love it and I would I use it um, all the time. It, and not only is it good for um, recovery. Okay, every medical professional tells you as a wheelchair user to get out of your chair. Because as I'm sitting down right now, I am, and my organs are being squished. So, I would actually recommend this for anybody. <sighs> no, not just if you have a CP. Um, my brother loves it, my sister loves it, and my mom loves it, <laughs> so, um, the long side is definitely one of my favorite things to do, or to have, and what's great about the often side is you can't wash it, like the cover, so, that is nice. So, this cover 
can't be, um, it's machine washable, so you can just throw it in the wash and be fine. And also, you can also do different colors. It's not just blue, it's multiple colors. Alright, another good thing to have, I know they're very expensive, however, <clears throat> I ha I would do an adjustable bed because it's not always going to be comfortable for you to just lay down with recovery. You have to be um, able to make adjustments. Or if you have a traditional bed and you, know, you don't have the luxury of having an adjustable bed, I would actually do a wedge pillow, which is what I had with my hip surgery, and that just allowed me to sleep on my side comfortably a little bit um, when I had my hip surgery. No, when we got my wedge pillow, I had to go. We had to go to a medical supply store, but that was pre Amazon slash online days. So I'm sure if you look up online um wedge pillow i'm sure they have it the other thing i would definitely recommend is definitely definitely have multiple pillows like different sizes different um, different shapes different fabrics uh just because you might need it to um, definitely prop, prop you up or prop your leg up or whatever you want. Medicine is not fun to take generally, especially not liquid. I can liquid medicine. Um, still do. <laughs> so, I still do. And so, what my, what my, Mom, what my parents did was they would have us eat something afterwards. Typically, it was a peanut butter cup, so we called it peanut butter chaser. But it was just a good thing to get the taste, the nasty taste of medicine out of your mouth. Terrible. And you don't have to do, just do, just do soft candy so that, um, you can eat it quickly so that you don't have to, like, Jolly Ranchers when it work because you can't bite it. Like, Starburst might work because you can bite those. My personal favorite was the peanut butter chaser, but, you know, it is what it is. No, I just, um, Starburst will work, gum will work, if you don't like candy or if your kid's allergic, um, I'm just saying, I would do like, um, chocolate milk would be one of my favorites, and then the peanut butter chaser, and then, um, you just basically want to do everything that's soft, because that way they can bite it and get it all over, like, the taste on their mouth. This is literally my major tip be prepared to do to do DIYs because not everybody's gonna have your situation and that's why you have to create it and come up with your own solution because nobody's gonna care like you care. What works for somebody else may not work for you. So that is my major tip and don't be afraid to um Think outside of the box. Um, yeah, because you never know what what can come out of it. That that includes the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any other video suggestions, or um, you can comment them down below. Remember to keep on rolling, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.